This chair is squeaky. I'm Nikosi Roma, a 16 millimeter film cinematographer. And today I'm answering your questions about film. Question one, favorite film stock. I would have to say my favorite film stock is Kodak 250D. It's a pretty versatile film stock and I tend to just like the way that daylight film produces colors better. Next question is how do you know which type of film stock to use? So the way I like to go about it is just determining first what light's available and if we're gonna be inside or outside. Typically if we're shooting outside at night, I'm gonna go with 500T because I want the maximum sensitivity. But like my general, again, why my favorite film stock is 250D is because that's kind of a good middle ground. You can shoot that in the day just fine, interior and exterior. What camera would you recommend to starters? The nice thing about 16 millimeter film or just you know, motion picture film in general is that it doesn't really matter what camera you're using. The most important thing is obviously the film stock and then the lenses that you're using. The camera body will affect things like how stable your image is, if you have light leaks, things like that. But I've seen some really great work out of like some of the old K3 cameras, uh, Bolexes, uh, even Super 8. Uh, cameras if you know what you're doing you can get a really solid image so that said if you're just getting started and you have no budget just go with one of those k3s um, you can get them modified to super 16 or ultra 16 pretty easily the lenses are affordable um, it's a good just entryway into super 16. do you expose at film stock iso or rather you overexpose the film like film photographers do typically i like to overexpose my negatives by a third to a full stop just depending on the look I'm kind of going for. Film needs light to actually produce an image. So leaning on overexposure is always better than underexposing. And do you sometimes shoot on digital or you strictly shoot film? I would consider shooting digital if it's the right project, but right now I just am loving shooting film and enough projects are coming in to sustain that. So I'm happy with it. How do your first time shooting go and any tips for first time shooters? Uh, my first time shooting was intense. I just tried to do too much at one time. I shot a little fashion spec video. And so I had an easy rig, I had a zoom lens on, was loading everything myself. I didn't have an AC to help me pull focus or anything like that. Um, the shoot went well, but it still was just too much. So my tip would be take it slow, do something locked off on a tripod, one subject, something simple like that. Would you consider dropping 16 millimeter and moving over to digital if the cost for processing rose three times? That is a great realistic question. I would have to say if the clients are still wanting to shoot film and paying for it, then that doesn't affect me at all. When it comes to personal projects, if the cost rose three times for processing, I'd really try to get in close with some labs to get some discounts or something. If not, I would definitely have to consider <laughs> my entire uh, career with shooting film at that point. Do you see yourself developing your own film in the future? Um, I know some people that do develop their own motion picture film. It's not as easy as developing still film from what I hear, but it's doable. I personally do not see myself doing that in the future just because I have two little girls and they get into everything. So just having chemicals around is not something that I feel safe doing personally. What are some good labs for development and scans? This is a question I get asked a lot. My suggestion for color film would be to send to Kodak in Atlanta. They offer really good prices and they have a fast turnaround time. If you shoot ectochrome, you're going to have to find another lab. I know Spectra does ectochrome and a couple other places do ectochrome. Ectochrome is higher to process, but there is a place that I saw recently called Dwayne's Photo that develops ectochrome um, for very cheaply. I haven't used them yet, but I'm considering sending some ectochrome to them. Uh, when I shoot just to see you know how that works if you shoot black and white my recommendation would be color lab in Maryland or spectra as well photo chems like the top of the top processing and scanning they do like all the major motion picture films but I haven't gone with them yet and from what I hear they're pretty expensive so for scanning I go third party um, to a place out in Littleton Colorado called the negative space the best cost to quality ratio scans um, out of any of the places that I've used all right, moving right along. Do you think it is a good investment to buy an RESR or Aton? Seeing the growing popularity to shoot on 16 millimeter film for commercials. I'm not gonna give any kind of financial advice or anything like that, but if there is a demand in your area for film and not enough film cameras available, then I would say go for it. Um, if there are film cameras to rent, then I would just start renting and then see you know where the work can take you from there. I was just curious about how you clean your gate and check it on a shoot with the SR2. 
This is pretty simple. Usually before I put film in, I'll just look from the rear of the camera through to the lens port and I can see if there's any hairs or anything in there. I'll just use a little blower to blow anything off. I know people recommend these orange stick uh, cleaners. I haven't used them yet. I haven't had the need to. I've been wondering about how you label and prepare your film for shipping out to the labs as well. Film tools and other places sell a roll of gaff tape that just has labeling on there. Um, you can use that, but if not, you can just use regular tape and just mark, put the roll number, you're gonna wanna put the mag number so you can keep track of which mags shot which film rolls in case something goes wrong, then you can track it down to which magazine. Um, you're gonna wanna put the production and usually I'll put the film stock and the loader and the date on there as well. Would you shoot a narrative on anamorphic? I actually did work with a great friend of mine, Mark Visser. So he wrote it, we put a team together and we shot something fun. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. I'll keep you posted on Instagram and YouTube and all that so you can make sure you don't miss that uh, when it comes out. I also did a video reviewing the Nanomorphs, which you can check out on my channel. Here goes another question. What are the best ways to save money on film? There's a few ways to save money on raw film stock. The first would be to source expired or short ends. Usually you can find these on eBay, or Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, things like that. You kind of have to be crafty. How is shooting on film different from shooting on digital? For me, the word I'd use to describe the difference would be intentionality. When I shoot film, I feel more grounded and connected to the craft. It definitely requires a more disciplined and focused mindset when approaching the project on set or in pre-production. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop those in the comments. You can hit me up on Instagram, always checking my DMs. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.